What wondrous love is this, exclaims a traditional American hymn. The gospel according to John is a wondrous love story. John tells us throughout the gospel the great story behind the story. For example, we all know the story of the birth of Jesus, but John shows us the child's true identity, that this child is the eternal word of God coming to dwell among us. He is divine grace and truth incarnate. We read that the woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus showed her the spring of everlasting life. The crowds following Jesus were hungry for bread. Jesus gives them the true manna, the bread from heaven. That is to say, he gives them life itself. The blind man wanted to see. Jesus gave him also the light of faith. And today we come in John's Gospel to the passion of Christ, the story of his death. And this story we also know very well. Patrick mentioned last Sunday how each of the Gospels portrays for us all the horrifying suffering and death of Jesus, telling us of his agony in body and spirit. Now John does not in any way diminish the reality of Jesus' death, but yet he points us to something beyond those gruesome details. John wants to show us, if you will, the death of Jesus from God's side, the death of Jesus as God sees it. John shares with us in this Passion reading about something so wonderful that he insists that it was seen by a truthful witness. And it's this verse, when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, one soldier thrust his lance into his side and immediately blood and water flowed out. Now in physical terms, it's very unlikely that anything would have flowed from the corpse of a crucified man, especially as Jesus in his suffering was already deprived of so much blood, was so thirsty and dehydrated. Yet John insists on this sign. He, he uses this sign as the evidence of a deeper meaning of Jesus' death. For John in his other writings simply declares God is love. So the very life of God the very essence of who God is, is love. And as Jesus dies, he breathes out the spirit, which we always associate with the love of God. But there is more. The physical blood of Jesus is the incarnation. It's the visible human nature of God's love. So in this flow of blood and water, John proclaims that love is stronger than death. Though Jesus truly died, his love which is also the love of the Father and the Spirit, can never die. It is never exhausted. And this love, symbolized by the blood and water, is what reconciles all of humanity, indeed all of creation, to God. In his book, Jesus of Nazareth, the late Pope Benedict asked the question, why was Jesus' death necessary? And he notes that in the past, oftentimes, the answer was given that the infinitely offended majesty of God demanded it. Benedict says, rather, it's the reality of evil and the injustice that has disfigured the world and at the same time has distorted the image of God. It's not the case of a cruel God demanding the infinite. It's exactly the opposite. It's that God himself is the place of reconciliation. And in the person of his son, God takes the suffering of the world upon himself. God himself drinks the cup of every horror and thereby restores justice through the greatness of his love. In other words, the passion of Jesus Christ, in the passion of Jesus, all of our sinfulness, all our injustice, all evil in the world has been put to death. God has swallowed it up. And what remains? the pure, perfect love of God, which is inexhaustible. It is ready to flow out at every moment once more upon us and upon all of creation. What wondrous love this is. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him, said Jesus. 
Now the true love, stronger than death, is revealed. And for us who believe, the pouring out of Christ's water, which we call baptism, and the drinking of Christ's blood, which we call Eucharist, these are God's own love for us. This is the way God's love touches you and me in the depths of our lives. This wondrous, miraculous love cleanses us from all sin. It restores us and renews us and makes us what we truly are, the beloved sons and daughters of God.